I'm Liz Falconer. I'm the manager of the e-learning development unit at the University of the West of England. Okay, and why are you here at IOSH today? I'm here at IOSH today to uh, demonstrate a simulation of an accident investigation that we're starting to work on in the virtual world, Second Life. And it's in particular, it's of interest to both uh, trainers and educators in occupational safety and health, but possibly also to industry for their own internal health and safety training as well. Okay. And for people such as myself, can you spell a little bit more about what Second Life actually is? Second Life, Second Life is a virtual world. It's run by a company called Linden Labs in America. But what it um, enables you to do is to take the form of an avatar, so a picture that you can choose, a, a, a sort of embodiment of yourself, and then you can move around in a virtual world. You can fly, you can walk, you can walk underwater, you can move around and interact. You can meet other people who also have avatars. You can talk using sound or you can chat using um, text as well. And you can also build things and interact with the things that, that you build. So it gives you a, a whole way of, of interacting in a, in a whole different sort of environment. Okay. And how are you and the university using Second Life? What we're doing at the moment is we uh, have currently have two islands. The way Second Life works is that you, you own real estate, you buy an island or a sim. We have one island, which is the one that I look after, which is uh, in relation to e-learning. So it it's, um, tries to help people to develop ideas around e-learning. And specifically what we're doing in there is using a simulation um, engine, something that uh, we've been partnering with a company called Citrus Virtual who have built a, um, the ability for us to be able to play movies with non-player characters that play out particular events and scenarios. The one that, that I'm interested in here is actually an accident that occurs in a warehouse. Students can witness that accident and then other students can investigate it by coming to talk to the witnesses, seeing what happens in the aftermath of the accident. They can then take all that information away, they can construct a, a view of the accident and then we can take them back into Second Life so they can rerun the accident and see what actually happened and they can reflect on it on their ability to uh, to investigate it. Sure. How, how long have you been using this? Um, we've been in Second Life probably um, all together probably about two years. We started out nice and small. We had a little corner of an island, somebody else's island that we were, were practicing with and then we kind of got our feet wet. We, we started to think about how to use it from the point of view of what can you what can you do in Second Life that you can't do in real life because for us that's what the real key to using Second Life is. You can replicate real life in Second Life, but then we couldn't really see the point in doing that. And what we started to think about about a year ago was how we can develop, um, as I say, things that you can't do in Second Life in terms of teaching and learning, particularly for our students, ways in which we can help them to connect the theory that they learn with the practice. A lot of students in UE are um, professional, going to the professions. And there's always that issue about connecting the, the theory of what they're learning with the practice of what they'll do in, in real life, and particularly in places where the sorts of things that they can't do in real life because it's dangerous or unethical or so on, we can, we can mimic in Second Life. And we've been doing that, building that, that simulator for about the past nine months, and we're just about to go live with it in September with some of our students in the university. Okay. I think it's, it's really has got tremendous potential for industry from a training, workplace training point of view. One of the things we're looking at is, is ways in which Second Life and simulations can help people to keep up skills that they don't use very frequently. For example, um, the health and safety executive, if they, they obviously investigate fatal accidents, but thankfully fatal accidents are very rare events these days. However, when they do occur, there's a whole skill set that they need to have, which they don't get to practice very frequently. So these kinds of simulations can enable you to keep that kind of, of skill level up, and that's probably a, applicable across a, a wide range of industries, not just in accident investigation, but in a range of safety issues, but also in a range of, of operational issues as well. Sure. You can um, join Second Life with an avatar, have an avatar for free. All you really have to do is download a viewer to your computer and then away you go. There are issues around graphics cards, as there are always issues around levels of, of technology. But as long as you have a fairly reasonable graphics card, generally, you're away. Once you're in Second Life, what takes the time is the learning to move around, learning not to bump into things, learning not to fall off things, learning how to fly, you know, that kind of, of thing. But actually, once you're in there, it's, it's really quite intuitive to do. And it's not hugely technological. The beauty of moving around as an avatar is that it's not really about programming. It's about movement. It's about interaction and movement. I think what it gives me from an e-learning point of view is it's a number of things. One is it's fun, I have to say. It's very different. It's fun to use once you're into it. It's a bit scary when you're first in it. 
But I think more than anything else, it gives us the opportunity to be able to help students to do things and to learn things and skills in a way that they couldn't do in real life. It's an interim environment between the theoretical environment and the real world environment, and it's a simulated environment in, in the middle, and that's really the exciting bit for us. And for anybody wanting any more information, obviously they can, they can look for themselves on the Second Life. Is there any other um, resource on the internet that might be able to point them in the right direction? Um, Second Life, actually going to the Second Life website is useful. Going to the Second Life wiki, there are, there are uh, links from the Second Life uh, website to the Second Life wiki. They're very welcome to look at our university website if they come to our website in e-learning, which is the university's website address just with e-learning on the end of it. Um, then we've got a whole series of information there about simulations in higher education, generally and then specifically about our work in, in Second Life. But just Googling Second Life will give you, you know, a mile and a half of, uh, of hits. Okay. Thank you, Liz. Thanks a lot.